A few weeks ago, we put together this Prelude sound card for my Amiga 2000. That gives this machine the ability now to play back music through AHI at a frequency of 44,000 Hz rather than just 22,000 when we were limited to Paula. Essentially, just increasing the audio output quality for AHI applications and in terms of what I was using it for, for Scum VM. But we also built this card here, the Prelude M Pegot, and the whole idea of this was to give us MP3 hardware decoding. Yes, this machine can software decode an MP3 because it's got the Pi Storm at its heart, but still, the hardware decoder was a nice addition to the sound card, taking the load off the CPU. But when we fitted this, there was a problem. That problem being that it sounds terrible. As you can hear, there is like a weird interference in the background of the audio track, like a strange sort of twangy sound or something. It just doesn't sound right. And it is this thing at fault. But it also introduced another problem. And that is if I go into the likes of Scum VM, and if we launch one of these games, Well, you get this intermittent static, making the game practically unplayable. Because with the MPEG it off the Prelude, it sounds fine. No static in AHI, MP3 playback through software decoding, it's grand. So this has to be the problem. Because with thanks to Gadget UK, he discovered that the problem is this chip here, the MPEG decoding chip. Or certainly that is the problem with the MP3 playback. We do have a replacement chip in here, so we will swap that out. That should fix the MP3 problem, and hopefully it will also fix the static problem in AHI playback. So we will just use hot air to take this off, but just to protect the little components around it, as always, a little bit of captain tape should do that job. Okay, one chip off. Let's give it a second to cool down and open this up, just to be sure that this is the replacement chip for it. I'm fairly sure it is. Both of these chips are labeled Micronas, MAS3507DF10, although the numbers on the bottom half of the chip, they're different. Just to be sure I do not get these mixed up, that is the original one. That goes away. This is the one we need to fit. So let's get this stuck down. Hey, would you look at that? The pins of this must have got bent slightly in transit. That's annoying. Just along there, those pins are bent out of shape. As is that side. Can I bend this back though? There probably is a better way of doing this other than just using your nail, but I suppose if it works, Right, I think that's us now. I'm sure there was a better way of doing that, but all the pens now do seem to be making contact with their pods. And I think that's us pretty well aligned, so let's see about getting it stuck down. Okay, redone. But I want to try something, because at Christmas there, my wife also got me one of these microscope things. Shall we take a closer look at my soldering? Ooh, this is pretty cool, isn't it? Look, there's one side of the chip there. And yeah, it's a little bit blurry, but maybe because there's still a bit of flux on the board. But that all looks pretty good there. With this side, again, that all looks pretty good. Doesn't make it so much easier for looking for bridges or anything like that. That side all looks okay. And then that last side, yeah, that all seems good as well. That is one really cool little piece of kit. 
It does actually let me do a direct record as well. I need to get an SD card into this though. And yes, it is just one of the small ones. I did purposely ask her just to get me one of the small ones because desk space is limited here, but it is really cool. But more to the point of this video and this little update, does the MPEGIT now work properly? Just leave that hanging for now. All right, let's just put a little bit of foam under it there, just to be sure it doesn't short anything out. So let's open a mega amp. Let's load the song. And what does it sound like? Yeah, that sounds good. Fantastic, that has fixed the MP3 problem. It is definitely using the MPEGIT though, isn't it? We just open the Prelude Mixer. MP3 playback comes through Auxiliary 1. Yeah, that is working fine. So that is one problem solved. What about the other though? So Sam and Max, Nope, still getting that static. What could the problem be? Because as I said, I'm the only one suffering this issue. I suppose the only difference really is how I have mounted this. I have used this cable. All the other guys have mounted their MPEGIT directly to the card, either on top or below. I really wanted this mounted like that so I could have it installed like that in the case and you know it looks awesome through the window but it may well be the case that I'm not going to be able to do that. Let me have a play. Well I have been screwing about with this and I've come to the conclusion that the cable is the problem. I tried another 40 pin IDE cable, a longer one, and the AHI problem went away. I thought, happy days, maybe there's something wrong with this cable that's causing the problem. Well, yeah, that was all good until I went to play an MP3. And then we were greeted with silence or the occasional blip of audio. Presumably, in that case, the length of this cable was causing that problem. So I think all we've got left, really, is to mount this directly to the Prelude. The question is, though, do I try to squeeze it in there or do we just put it in Below. As you can see, I have mounted the MPEGA card just to the underside of the Prelude. Decided to put it there just because, to be honest, the only pins that I really had were those ones. And well, they were not long enough to mount it on top here and have it clear those other socketed chips. But more importantly, has that fixed our issues? So we'll start with an MP3. Let's just make sure that that still works. And yeah, that all sounds good. Although, does that sound a little slow? I don't know, maybe it's just me. But it does sound nice and clear. What about Scum VM though? Is all that nasty static gonna be away? Yeah, sounds good so far. Friends. Friends. Yeah, we definitely would have heard We've static by now. Together three times, and already you're telling me you just want to be friends. I think that's fixed the issue. You never gave me a chance. And for that, so while it's great that it is working, it's a bit of a shame that I can't have my little ribbon cable in there to show it off the way I want it. Oh well. Function over form, I suppose. I think I'd rather go out with someone more bit well, just let me listen to that MP3 again. This is the song that I use over any of my little montages or anything like that. Created by Momentum. The song is Cathode Ray Gun. But I am very used to listening to it, and it just doesn't sound right.
hold on till I change the mega amp here back to AHI. I'll turn off the hardware decoding. That sounds right, but that sounds ever so slightly faster. You're going to have to let me do a comparison here. I'm going to record both songs in their entirety onto the PC. And let's compare the two of them in uh, Audacity. And so yes, check this out. The audio track on the top, well, that is the playback using the MPEGA card. The audio track on the bottom, that is using this card on AHI playback, so software playback. The bottom one is the one that sounds more right to me. And as you can very clearly see, the top one, the MPEG playback, it is slower. And what you're looking at here, I have synced up the exact start of both tracks. And you can see just at the end there, as they fade out, over the course of the five minutes or so that that song plays for, the MPEG playback is a couple of seconds slower. There's eight seconds in it, although I'm not really sure how we could possibly solve that. Is it even worth worrying about? I dare say, for the majority of songs, you're probably not going to notice it. The crystal on the MPEGA card does control the playback speed. And supposedly if you put a faster crystal in there, the songs will play back faster. In fact, just let me pull the card out. So the crystal fitted to this is 14.31818 megahertz. The bill of materials actually calls for a 14.318 megahertz chip. This thing is ever so slightly faster. So if anything then, the proper crystal for the MPEGA card would have MP3 playback slightly slower again. Maybe there's something else going on. Just want to pause things there for a second, just in the middle of editing this video. And I want to show you something that I've discovered on the data sheet for the MPEG decoder card. If we go down to page 9 of this, the MAS 3507D should be driven by a single clock at a frequency of 14.725 megahertz. That is slightly faster than the oscillator we have fitted. It's 14.31818. But just how much of a difference is that? Well, 100 divided by 14.725 multiplied by 14.31818 well, the oscillator that we have fitted is 97.2% the speed that it should be, or about 2.8% slow. But do we have any way to prove that? Well, remember in Audacity, when I recorded the track playing either through the MPEG or AHI, playing back through AHI, the track time there is 4 minutes 56 seconds. Playing back through the MPEG, it's five minutes and four seconds, about eight seconds slower. Five minutes, four seconds, that is 304 seconds total, times 2.8%. Now granted, I didn't work that out perfectly, but allowing for that little bit of discrepancy there, I do think that this shows the slow playback is just being caused by the wrong crystal being fitted to the MPEG. The only problem, of course, is that I cannot find a 14.725 megahertz oscillator anywhere. But with that said, back to the video. But at least everything more or less works now. Although I suppose the way it seems to work best in this machine is without that MPEGA card whatsoever. So yeah, the Prelude itself, that's a fantastic piece of kit. The MPEGA card, Nah, the jury's out. There's just one other thing I want to do before we finish up though. Last time when we built this, we did try to do some audio recording from a microphone input and it sounded a bit crap. But I did get a new microphone at Christmas there. In fact, you're listening to it now. A new wireless Hollyland mic. And I want to try that on the Prelude. Unfortunately though, it's currently connected to my camera. So I now need to disconnect that from there and connected to this, so things are about to go quiet. Check one, two. This is a test of the Prelude microphone input. And we're back. 
Well, not sure about that. Still sounds a bit weak, to be honest. But one possible option here is to swap out the little amplifier that sits on the microphone input. That is that component sitting in there. The one currently installed in there is an MC33078. But we were chatting about this on Gadget UK's Discord. And he suggested, why don't you try one of these instead? An LM833, more or less exactly the same part. They both have exactly the same pinout. They both work in more or less exactly the same way. So let's swap over to that and see if it makes any noticeable difference to the microphone recording. I suppose one thing that this chip maybe has going for it compared to the original is that the LM833N on its data sheet, it is described as an audio amplifier with particular emphasis on performance in audio systems. Well, this is an audio system, but I am going to have to disconnect the microphone from the camera again to test this. Check, check, check one, two. This is a test of the Prelude microphone input. So it might just be me, but yeah, I sort of think that second one was a bit clearer. Let's just listen to the two of them again, side by side. Check one, two. This is a test of the Prelude microphone input. Check one, two. This is a test of the Prelude microphone input. So yeah, it does sound a little bit better, I think, with the LM833N in there. So I think we'll just leave that. We'll leave that in there. I mean, it's still nowhere near as clear as this camera's audio recording is. Although I'm not really sure in what circumstances I will really need to record audio to a microphone input on my Amiga 2000 here. So final conclusion on the Prelude. Well, it's really good when it comes to AHI sound in the Amiga, but its microphone input maybe leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, the MPEGA card, yeah, that could definitely be better because that MP3 playback is a little bit slow. So if anyone has any suggestions as to how to maybe further improve the audio input, please let me know. Although, as I say, I'm not really sure in what circumstance I would need to use that. I suppose more so though, if anyone knows why that MP3 playback is slow, other than it maybe being the wrong crystal installed, or if anyone has any other suggestions as to how to maybe sort that problem, well, equally let me know. But there is so little in it that maybe it's not worth worrying about. MP3 playback is nice and clear now. It is being hardware decoded, so it's taking the load off the CPU. Even though in this machine, that CPU is a Pi Storm, and said Pi Storm has more than enough horsepower to software decode MP3s anyway. So yeah, in terms of that, the MPEGA card in here is completely pointless. But it's a bit of hardware that I own, and it has to be in here doing something, or it would just drive me nuts. So we'll just leave it at that. It's all working for now. Can't really ask for any more than that. I did want to get this done before heading down to Amiga Ireland next weekend. It's done now. It's another thing ticked off my little list of projects to do before then. And yeah, that'll do for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.